Within phylum platyhelminthes, there are four different classes, and one of those classes is class Trematoda. This group is kind of unofficially or more commonly referred to as the flukes. And if you're wondering what flukes even means, here is a picture of one of these, which by the way, you know, this looks very large, but this might be the size of, I don't know, one of your fingers. I mean, they're not that large. But flukes apparently is an old English term referring to flounder, like the fish flounder. And we think whoever decided to refer to the trematodes as flukes thought there was a resemblance. Maybe, I mean, I can kind of see it, but that's where flukes comes from. But whenever someone's referring to flukes today, they're not referring to flounder. They're referring to these guys, these trematodes. So things about class trematoda is these organisms are parasitic. And parasites in general, no matter what class of organisms we're looking at, they have at least one host. So one organism that they rely on for feeding, for reproduction, and maybe other bodily functions as well. Now within class Trematoda, all of these guys are parasitic. All of them have at least one host. And if they have a host, whether they have one or multiple hosts in their life cycle, one of those hosts will be a mollusk. Now, if you haven't watched my mollusks videos yet, um, this is going to include organisms like snails and slugs, octopi and squid, clams and oysters. So all of those are found within phylum mollusca, as well as quite a few others as well. So most mollusks are found in the water, though there are some that are on land as well. Now I mentioned, you know, some of these might have multiple hosts, so they complete part of their life cycle in one organism and part in another organism. For these guys, just one of those two hosts will be a mollusk, not necessarily both of them. Now that in and of itself might not really seem that interesting, like cool, it's a parasite in something. Uh, but the one that I want to highlight, I'm not going to talk about the species specifically, but what the species do does is there is a species of trematode that infects two different organisms. So it has two hosts. One of those hosts is a snail and it turns that snail into a zombie. And when I say zombie, I really do mean zombie. So what happens? What you're seeing here is a snail that's been infected by this trematode. And the trematode is in its larval stage inside of the snail. And the larvae make its way into the eye stalk. So a typical snail eye stalk is, you know, narrow and brown and uninteresting. But these larvae go into the eye stalks and start pulsing. And they essentially start looking like maggots, which is a really great food source for birds. Now that part isn't the mind control. That's just kind of a physical attribute. Not only do they physically look like these maggots, but they're able to make the snail travel up grass blades, plants, essentially getting themselves to be in the sun so the birds actually see them. Snails need to be in moist environments. They're typically rarely um, in the sun. They're usually in the leaf litter. They're at the bottom of our forest floor. So somehow, and we think it's through some sort of chemical hormone com um, compilation, that this trematode is able to get the snail to actually move. And the snail is alive. So a lot of zombie movies and stuff, like the human has died and they come back to life. But a lot of zombies, and this is not the only organism that can zombify another organism, most zombie organisms, the host is still alive. And then the zombie, or the parasite really, takes over. Then the bird eats it. Inside of the bird, the trematode um, develops into an adult and will lay eggs while in the bird. Those eggs travel through the digestion system and the bird ends up pooping out the eggs, which then the snail eats that poop. And when the snail eats that poop, it takes in the eggs, the eggs hatch into these larvae. Now in the birds, this actually 
as far as parasites go, it's not really doing anything in the bird. The bird isn't zombified. The bird isn't really being negatively impacted by this parasite. It just serves as a host. It has the right body conditions, the right pH, the right temperature, the right nutrient balance for this larvae to fully develop into an adult and reproduce, typically through asexual reproduction. Now, I know my description is riveting, but if you want to see a video of this actually going on, take a look at this video that's popping up, and it's also found in the comments section where you can kind of see this parasite in action. And again, this is not the only trematode, and not all trematodes will zombify their host, but all trematodes will at least be found in some sort of mollusk like this snail here.